Hello folks, Georgie and Joe here, the one and only Joe Shannon and myself Georgie Gormo. We're here in the Abbey Arts Centre, Bally Shannon in County Donegal. And what are we here for Joe? We're here to meet a fantastic man who uh, we've, I've heard on radio a number of times, known of him professionally, only met him last week for the first time, very impressive guy. And he is, I suppose, the lead along with a number of people to a fantastic event all about cancer here on Saturday the 13th of May in the Abbey Art Centre. Mm -hmm. So come on in, I'm going to meet Paul. Yeah, this way. Hello everybody and welcome to the Recovery Tour. Uh, Joe Shannon here and of course I'm with my partner in crime, if we call it that way, Georgie Gorman. And we are absolutely really, really delighted and honoured uh, to be in the presence of a man who I have admired for many, many years. He's a former manager of Northwest Tourism, done Trojan work in that position, was manager of Sligo University Hospital and Letterkenny Hospitals, of course. And again, in that field is synonymous with, with, with promoting the hospitals brilliantly. Uh, and a man who shares a story very similar to a lot of us. And if I may, I'd like to welcome Paul McLoon to our show. And Paul, can we start off because you have your own journey, and I hope you don't mind me asking you about it, but can you tell us a little bit about your story? Well, first of all, I want to welcome you to Bally Shannon, oh, the, the, the Abbey Art Centre, yes. as it's officially known as, and uh, Bally Shannon is, is my hometown. Uh, and I lived here all my life, life, except for 15 years where I worked in Dublin. And that's where I met my wife, who's from County Leash. And we came back and we settled in Bally Shannon and... Uh, you know, came back and I worked, as you, as you rightly mentioned, in the Northwest Tourism Board. And uh, at one stage in my life in the late 90s, I was the manager of uh, Sligo University Hospital, which was a, a very rewarding job for me. Everyone I spoke to before that said, oh, you're not going to like this job. It's tough. It's blah, blah, blah. So many hours. But actually, I was passionate about the yes. job because it also was where my three kids were born. And it's my local hospital, so it was actually, you use the word honour, it was an honour uh, to work in Sligo Hospital. And I did that for nearly five years. And just as an anecdote, the last job I did in Sligo Hospital is we looked for funding for a new oncology unit. And the department hadn't got enough money that we mm -hmm. could construct one. So we had to reconfigure quite a number of departments in the hospital, including paediatrics, which we moved to the, the seventh floor and uh, we built the oncology unit on not a great budget at the time, but it was fantastic that we got it built. Uh, I was not to know at that time that uh, I would be a frequent patient of that very same unit, uh, but great staff, great people. But from that, I moved then to uh, the tourism board. And uh, the reason I moved there is you say, now if you're so passionate about the hospital, but actually very simply, the, the salary was a, uh, it was an enormous difference okay. and also the passion for your place and where you come from. So to get a job that you can make a difference uh, is, is a huge motivation for anyone. And I felt I worked the last 10, I, I retired because of ill health when I was 57 years of age in 2011. Uh, but I worked 10 years in tourism and, uh, you know, things got a lot better during my time there. Now there was a lot more people than myself involved, but it was a great job to be in. And you can see some of the platforms uh, and the increase in tourism figures that uh, have happened since then. But I know for a fact, there's a lot more to be done in tourism and there's fine people working there now, but uh, I'm not one of them because uh, as I said at the outset, I mm -hmm. ended up spending quite a bit of time in that same oncology. And before unit. we go on to that, what, was it a huge transition going from a health board scenario you know what I mean? Maybe that's the wrong word scenario, but you know, managing a, a massive busy hospital with all the, you know, the work that you were doing, building oncology units and I suppose trying to get funding for that. I'm sure there was work with government and stuff. And then going into the tourism field, it was a huge diverse difference, wasn't well, it, it? it? It was. And actually I asked the same question myself because uh, someone, uh, uh, you know, approached me about applying for the tourism job and my same words here is what would I know about? tourism and they says well you seem to know an awful lot about management mm. and if you bring those skills to tourism that's exactly what was needed so a lot of the work say in the hospital setting cross-border was easily transferable and we got a lot of funding in tourism 
uh, from cross-border body bodies. Also working with uh, civil servants and with the department is a tricky piece of work. <laughs> it doesn't really matter whether you're in health and tourism, but you had to attract funding to the Northwest. That was a key issue uh, with the Dublin offices. So certainly I didn't find a great difference and I knew I must have been doing something right because working with the industry, uh, you know, I, I had a very good relationship mm -hmm. with them and uh, would have fought their corner mm -hmm. for them as you would have uh, in the hospital that you had tried to get more services and uh, more staff uh, for you know the hospital setting. You also did the same in tourism and you tried to grow business. And it's very important because you know with, at that time, my kids were in their late teens, early 20s. You had a big issue about creating jobs yes. for young people. And it's a great honor, to use the word again, to be able to influence job creation yes. in your own place. So that was very good actually, Joe. And I suppose inevitably then, uh, as has been well documented, but maybe if you don't mind sharing with our viewers, uh, of course you were hit them with bad health while you were working as manager for Sligo uh, Northwest Tourism. Yeah, well, I got my first bout of cancer in 2006, and I was in a minor car accident in uh, going to Monaghan. We used to cover Cavan, Monaghan, Donegal, Sligo, Leitrim, and. Uh, my arm was sore after the accident, after a week later, and my, I went back to the GP, and my own GP at this stage was on leave. So the GP was there, I was 51 years of age at the time, he says, you know, Paul, you've turned 50, you, you should consider the MOT. And jokingly, he says, we'll do it in reverse order. <laughs> and I said, what do you mean? He says, well, we'll start with a colonoscopy, okay. uh, which is just as well, because the colonoscopy uh, discovered a tumour. Uh, in the colon, in the bowel region, and uh, that was done in Sligo General, and uh, I think within two weeks I had surgery wow. in the hospital in, in April uh, 2006, of which was a very successful intervention, and because there was complications at work, and you, I hadn't got my priorities right at them, I was back at work within a month. Within and, a month? Uh, within a month, wow. and uh, that was okay, but... Uh, I remember the oncologist saying to me at the time that the first cousin of colon cancer is liver cancer. Right. And uh, so because you presented with cancer, you go for frequent uh, tests and uh, appointments and outpatient appointments. And good advice I got from my surgeon at the time, Martin Caldwell, was never, ever miss an appointment. And I never did. Right. Uh, and in 2008, they, they discovered that I had liver cancer. Oh God! And at that stage, I was referred to uh, St. Vincent's Hospital in Dublin for surgery, which was followed by chemotherapy uh, for six months, which I found extremely tough. At this stage, I most mm. certainly wasn't back at work then. But uh, with all that, uh, I did go back to work mm. for a few months. But in 2009, uh, there was another uh, dot found on the liver. So, uh, so this I, is the second time again? I'd say I had liver cancer a wow. second time in 2009. So back to the same surgeon in uh, St. Vincent Hospital. And I had trouble with infections and stuff. So the complications of cancer were becoming very apparent to me. And I discovered how lucky I was yeah. in 2006 that I actually had an uncomplicated time. But anyway, the great uh, medical people and the great advice I was getting. And that was the first time, Joe, that I started reaching out. I started talking to my family about uh, the problems of cancer and I shared the thing which I'd said the first time I bottled it up a good mm -hmm. bit which wasn't the most sensible approach but then I went back and uh, all going well I says back to work and uh, went swimmingly and uh, did all that and I always said that if I got another cancer I certainly would not be fit to go back to work. So you've had three cancers and you still went back to work? I went back to work at that wow. stage and uh, but uh, the, the as the man says, the writing was on the wall right. for me that uh, something more was going to happen. And sure enough, uh, I got prostate cancer in uh, 2012 and had the treatment in 2013. But at that stage, uh, I, I, I had the... Martin Caldwell gave me advice at that time was, Paul, you know, this is cancer. Give it your undivided attention. Right. You know, we went out buying cars and we're going to six different garages, getting quotes everywhere. Mm. We're doing the same. We're getting a bit of an improvements in our home. And I was being a bit blasé about my health, which was stupidity yeah. by me. And as uh, a naivety might be a better word than stupidity, would it be? No, well, it's there cannot be anything more serious in yes. your life yes. uh, than your health. So it needs to be given that undivided attention. Okay. And uh, that I did uh, from this time. And because 
I reached out to the Irish Cancer Society, spoke to fellow patients. People I've never met have advised me. I went uh, for different treatments, you know, psychologists, uh, psychotherapists, speech therapists. All of that interventions have been a, a big help to me. And uh, just to, to finish the cancer story, in uh, 2020, I knew I was in a bit of trouble. I actually went on holidays to Tenerife, and I knew I was going to the toilet too often. Right. Uh, but uh, not to be furry graphic on it, no. but uh, I says, well, and I told the surgeon, I says, I'm going to the toilet, but I don't need to go. This is now with bowel mm -hmm. movements and mercury. Mm -hmm. But I never sent for a CAT scan, and uh, nothing showed up. Okay. Uh, so it was all right. So I was in Tenerife and I was going and I said, this, there's something not right, even if the CAT scan. So I rang uh, actually Martin Caldwell's side husband and I said, you know, you didn't want to bring me in. And uh, so he brought me in and uh, I both had a, another colonoscopy and uh, an MRI scan. And sure enough, there was a very dangerous tumor oh. uh, in the bowel. And, you know, he always says to me then, he, you know, you kn know your body better than anyone and, and the learning from that is that if you go to a doctor and don't tell him or her whoever the doctor is what's wrong they're not mind readers yeah. uh, so you have to tell them and that critical intervention was made then that uh, he took out the full bowel because yeah. he says you know I'm in extreme danger if I didn't take this uh, you know drastic action as the way I was looking upon it you know he gave me maybe nine twelve months would have oh. been uh, as much as I have and that's well over three years ago now, but uh, just to uh, teach me another lesson. So I noticed that a thing like a stay in my eye, which uh, again, I noticed in Tenerife, and, but I never bothered about it uh, because I was having the uh, surgery. But I got it checked out and sure enough, there was a tumor uh, just underneath my left eye, a very nasty little thing it was too. So I had to go to the Matter Hospital and uh, a plastic surgeon. Had to, so there's a hundred stitches put in there. And because, yeah, and because it was COVID times, this is why I know doctors don't tell the truth. He says, we can't put you to sleep. We're going to keep you awake, but you'll not feel a thing. And I can tell you, I felt every bit of it. And he was, put, I don't know how, that, you know, but I used to joke with him, you know, that, you know, it was plastic surgery. I says, pity I didn't know you 45 years ago. And you could have made me maybe a film star. <laughs> you like but a film star. That, but, that, but that was it. So that was my sixth cancer. So, you know, wow. so it's Amazing. been two years ago since I've had any treatment. But I never feel... I'm out of the woods, but, uh, you know, I, I'm happy and uh, my family's happy and I think we're, we're going well enough. So Can I ask you, Paul, how did you deal with the psychological effect of it? You know, like with all of the, the, the physical treatment doctors and everything, the psychological thing must have been uh, tough as well, was it? Oh, it, it, of course. it, it was. Uh, I would have suffered uh, during chemotherapy without a doubt mm. from what's known as chemo fog, yeah. but it's actually depression. And uh, I got the chemo for six months, so the second three months of that would have been, I would have been in a dark place, no question about it. And that's where uh, I just was at home and I lifted the phone, the free phone line of the Irish Cancer Society and rang someone and, and the nurse just said, you're not alone, Paul. Mm. And they started referring me like, at, you know, Wine Street in Sligo, mm. uh, the Cancer Centre in Donegal Town, Cancer Care West in Letterkenny, the Relay for Life in Letterkenny. And then, as I said to you earlier, these total strangers, were giving me pep talks on the phone and this was enormously helpful to me and of course my family were like a rock around me at that stage yeah. because i told them what was wrong mm. and as you said earlier it's so important to talk to family isn't it and let them know what's going on to a certain extent you know you no, just but it's very it's, it's, it's what we said earlier georgie that nobody's mind readers so uh yeah. unless i tell them how i feel it's very difficult for people to help me yeah. and uh and I keep saying to people, you know, that uh, cancer is not just about you. Mm. It's about everyone around you. Because if you get sick, everyone around you gets very worried about you. Absolutely. So you must share with them yeah. and they must know. So as I said earlier again, is how can someone help you if they don't know really? And you have to tell them. And some of the, you know, we all say that. And by the way, men get a bad press on this. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and, and any woman watching now would probably say, what's he talking about? But actually, women don't always open up either. They're great mm. helpers. Right. But yeah. we yeah. all suffer from this, is all I'm saying. No one's yeah. better than the other. But it took me a while to get around to that line of thinking. But now I'd be quite open about it. Uh, I'd admire you guys immensely because ye sharing your journey 
is exactly what people need to relate to and say, if I'm, and every time I'm sure that you would, uh, you know, read something on a website, it's the same story. And, and why I came about running this event, which we're going to talk about in a minute in Ballyshannon, is because of my own experience, I would help the Irish Cancer Society uh, maybe talk at a public event, one-to-one -one on the phone. But the message I keep hearing back is that he or she is sitting at home. Mm. They're trying to deal with this alone. They're not talking about it. And all, you know, people, we have to respect how people deal with cancer mm. and yeah. they can deal with it as they see fit. All my event that we're running here is to prompt them yeah. that, that there's help out there. And that's... Mm. Uh, will be my strong message from the event yeah. that's upcoming in Balashan. And, and this event that you have coming up is in May, isn't it? It's in May the 13th, and yeah. because uh, there'll be a number of cancer patients at it, and uh, as I said, I go to events myself, so our best energy is in the morning. Okay. So yeah. it's on a Saturday morning at 10.15. It'll allow people to travel to it, yeah. and partly, you know, have their breakfast, have the bit of energy. Uh, and it allows families to, to bring their loved one. Or, but it's, it's not just for cancer patients, of course. It's for everybody because it's a public awareness event yeah. on the issues that I, I talked about. But I'm trying to be, if you like, user-friendly to yeah. anyone who wants to go. And we'll have it finished at a quarter past one. Yeah, and a lot of the people that you have come in here to take part in, one of them, a lot of them have been involved in the music business, if you like, right? They have. Um, so after the scene being said, of course, we need someone that will speak about it, that, you know, from a professional and personal point of view. And that's where I asked my own surgeon, uh, who many, many people will know in this region, Martin Caldwell, to speak about the experience in Sligo Hospital. And, uh, you know, he's 25 years there now, so he'll be able to tell us a lot about trends in this locality. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, and plus, he, he's a brilliant surgeon. Absolutely. Uh, and that's really... What, what we want them here to talk to us for. And I know a lot of people uh, have been on the treatment with Martin and they'll be here, uh, you know, just, just to meet Martin in, in a different setting. But mm. sometimes it's great because mm. you only meet a surgeon maybe when he's gowned up and you forget yeah, yeah, the yeah. human behind it. And Martin's yeah. been a, a great help to me to the extent, like I worked in the hospital when Martin was there. And mm. I'm one of the few that I have his own... Uh, mobile number so when i'm in trouble I, I actually text him but he'll not thank me for telling people <laughs> everyone here that they look for his, his everyone for everyone in the audience yeah, exactly. <laughs> so then there's a guy who wrote a book called martin McHugh. he's not the donegal footballer but he, i was, was going elite. to ask uh, no so it's not he, the fo footballer no he's the yeah but he's a litrum Sorry, okay he, All right. he's a litrum goalkeeper and he's also written a, a, a book so he's had testicular cancer oh, yes, I've and seen prostate it. Yes, cancer. Yes, he's been on the radio, brilliant and, guy. And, yeah. and he does talks, uh, you know, in, in various, especially in GAA mm. clubs and that. He, he is very fine, he's very motivated. And as a matter mm. of fact, he, he works in Sligo Hospital. And then we have a lady who have a, a young lady in her 30s called Nikki Bradley, she's from Donegal, uh, who has had so many experiences of difficulties in her life. Uh, with her leg, she lost the leg, and she's mm. had cancer. She's climbed so many mountains, wow. literally, and she's now actually a professional motivational speaker, and she's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. And I am particularly delighted that, that that she's speaking at our event as well. Yeah. So there's really a good lineup, and uh, I'm looking forward to to the event myself. And as I say, and as you quite rightly asked earlier, George, is a lot of people will see this afterwards. So if you yeah. can't make it. But it's clearly, if, if people watching this, lift the phone, look for help. Well, I was just going to say to you um, that you've been through the wars yourself, as they're saying. It, it, hasn't, it hasn't slowed you down, really, has it? I mean, you're, you're doing as much as you can do, aren't you? Because it's important for people to know that as well. You know, more than myself and Joe got to it, that we decided to set up this recovery tour that we're going around the country meeting with people like yourself and all that, you know, so people can put a, a small bit of effort into it, you know, to try and... You know, get out yeah, and about if you can. Exactly, and you, you've you've said it quite rightly, George and, and Joe as well. Is that you have got help yourselves, mm -hmm. yeah, no more than myself. Yeah, uh, and it's mm -hmm. a matter. And as we say, we can't, you know, we don't push people into something, but we prompt them and say, "Well, this worked for me." Yeah, yeah. and I think the three of us are saying the same thing. And it's also the message that we come back to it from earlier that it's three men speaking yeah, absolutely. here. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, and uh, but as I said the earlier, I'm not so sure that. Men get a bad press on opening up at times, yeah. but we're not that bad. No, no, no. we and, are uh, getting better, and, yeah, and, and yeah. I think we are better at talking. Uh, yeah. And I think you're right. It's 
not one top template for everybody because everybody is different too aren't they you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? and we respect respect yeah. is a key thing and uh just yeah. one thing that i forgot sorry judge to cut across you there's one thing that i you know anytime i speak in public about cancer is i never ever forget the people when you've been on a long journey like me which is now 17 years the amount of people that you lose yes people that have spoke personally to me yeah. that i have no understanding why i made it and they didn't mm. so we will remember them Absolutely. at this event and i never ever yeah. do anything on cancer without talking about some of the great people that unfortunately are not with of us course. anymore yeah. Absolutely. yeah yeah wow. it's very very brilliant what you're doing paul mm -hmm. and i'm sure you're not doing it on your own i'm sure there's a whole raft of people helping you with this and you know we include them all when when we're talking to you uh i i just want to congratulate you on on on, on putting this together i think it really really is brilliant and i think that can increase awareness around cancer we're always saying that if we could just get everybody to think to go into their local gp tomorrow morning make an appointment to just do as you call it an mot or have a chat yeah. with that gp to just mm. to do whatever testing because early prevention of any illness is just key isn't it really you know absolutely yeah. and you watch yourself boys on this tour <laughs> i'm admiring you saying you're talking about me having energy I said, you know, I'm, I'm best here now but you're, you're doing a mighty job well, we have the energy as you said in the morning you know it's our best time and then after yeah. that it's home and rest and all like that what right. you do that's the that's the way it works at the moment yeah. you know but i'm um, going back just to remind people of the event it's on the 13th of may it's on a saturday it's here in Ballyshannon, in this place, the this place, Abbey Art Centre, yeah, yeah, and, and it's yeah. uh, abbeycentre.ie. Yeah. yeah, you can get your. Tickets. So can you get your tickets on that abbeycentre.ie. Perfect. Yeah. And There's an awful lot of tickets sold, so do there get is it. some tickets available. Is there that? are there some tickets? Okay. But it's it's uh, as we talk today, it's still six to seven weeks away the yes. event, so it's unlikely on the last week that there'll be any. So I'd encourage anyone that's interested, maybe it'd be best to book now, but. Uh, as I said, the voluntary support I'm getting for this event is enormous. And anyone who does come to it, I know from uh, talking to a few people, they're going to be the best fed 282 <laughs> people because there's that many beautiful cakes and sandwiches oh, being brought to the event. Uh, it's going to be fantastic. They're all given that they said they're for Tommy Garman, but yeah. I uh, think they'll spread a bit further than that. And there's plenty of parking. I think it, because uh, we parked in a fantastic car park just across the road there. Which is important to say as well for anyone Absolutely. that may need uh, assistance or whatever. Yeah, you know they can get near the building and all of that, can't they? Oh no, there, there's this is Ballyshannon. I no, know you don't you don't do we things care, by half. We cater for everything. <laughs> this time, yeah. Well, Paul, it's been an absolute pleasure, and we just you know on behalf of Georgie and myself to say thank you to you for doing this event, and I'm sure we speak on behalf of a lot of people who are on their cancer journeys, maybe themselves or their families, and you're quite right. It is very important that we bring this. I rode it outside of the uh, uh, all around the country, and it's great to see such an event in Valley Shannon mm. with such a prestigious lineup. And of course, I'm conscious the choir is going to open on the day, isn't it? You have the uh, yeah. a choir Survi from one of the cancer centres, yeah? choir from, from Ladder County, uh, which is brilliant and, on the day the, too. They'll sing my favourite song, "Something Inside So Strong," which ah, I used to brilliant. put on and and look in the mirror sometimes when I was going through yes, chemo. Yes, yes. So the yes. boys always play for me. Oh, well, that's so great. Is uh, this a mixed choir of men and female? Of course. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's uh, it's that's cancer brilliant. survivors. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. it, cancer yeah. doesn't discriminate against gender, unfortunately. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. but they're great. I'll cry. Yeah. So, from the Abbey Art Centre here in mm -hmm. Ballyshannon, the venue are where this great uh, half-day event is going to take place on the 13th of May. We say to Paul McLoon, let me shake your hand. Absolute yeah, pleasure. Absolutely. Pleasure. Absolutely. Yeah. Brilliant, and you too. Yeah. Thank you very much. And thank, thank you, Paul. And thanks for taking your tour to Ballyshannon. <laughs> Bye! Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you are.